And then that's where I'll cut the video there. So now we get to going into the discussions. Yay! I'll pull back up to the... That's interesting. Okay. <laughs> Friggin' something went wrong. All right, I'll try again. <laughs> pull the video back up. Uh, here we go. So you were saying something along the lines of like... Different bodies, same nightmare. Yeah, I think. Or something like that. I know it was along those lines. Uh, I think it happened. Well, hold up. I'm already sit. This is something else I wanted to hit up too. Was uh, what did he see in his flashback? And also, you were telling me red eyes in the background, yeah. which I had missed. Right there. I think that may have been, like, the computer consoles in the back. Because, like, in this... As if we see in this shot, I think... Or, you know, previous shot. You got, oh, the, you got okay. these buttons in the back, too. <laughs> I, I, a good call, though. I did not see that. And I can also see what you were thinking of. Those are eyes in the background. I can see that. Because then also his tail wagging in the breeze kind of made it look like they were blinking. Oh, no, they were blinking. They were blinking. <laughs> Their eyes! <laughs> noted! 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 Oh, God. This is why I have you here. You're seeing things that I'm not seeing right now. So this is good. This is good. Also, everybody else in the chat, if there was something that you think you saw and then we probably missed or something, by all means, point it out to us like we did. Like that. Like that right there. But then what were we seeing here with... This wonderful old piece of tech called a VHS. <laughs> so JC Jensen in space, JC Tech training video. Zombie drones. And what does it say in the subtitles? That's what I'm trying to see. I'll get back to that bit there, but I wanted to try and read the subtitles on this. Do not play for robots. They will not like it. Okay, that was all. <laughs> but then, what were we seeing with the flashbacks? Him touching that. Okay. That looks like one of the uh, like one of the maid drones in his uh, flashback in episode two. So something something may have happened with that one. Yep, that's that's a that's a that's a chandelier with what I would assume to be probably human, because it's blacked out, just like humans were in his flashback. And then this. That right there. This singularity looking motherfucker. That apparently, if we look it to our right, is the same mansion that we were seeing in his flashback. So was their world, like their previous home world, wherever it was, whether it be Earth or something else, did they accidentally make its respective star go supernova and then collapse into a black hole? Because you could also see like bits and pieces of yeah. like trees and the building itself being pulled up. So that's... Was that a result of Absolute Solver? Because you got all this like text in the background that like if it went berserk and unchecked it caused a singularity to form. Whatever null is supposed to be, is that, like, supposed to be the apex of whatever? I just call them absolvers, just because it's an easier way to get the point across of an absolute solver unit, so I just go with absolver. That's interesting. And the fact that it just happens, like, super quick. Yeah. That's... But what does it mean when he touches the... VHS that says just simply zombie drones. Is that what they... Is that what... Is that what Uji's turning into? Maybe. Or is that just simply like the designation that JC Jensen calls what an absolver is? Like, is it just a ZD? A zombie drone? Oh! Coop saying null, which is a programmer way of saying like the void or nothing. There's nothing in there. 
that's a good point to bring up. That what we're looking at here is not just null, but nothing. That there is nothing in there. You're staring into the abyss, and the abyss is staring back. That's an interesting call right there. But now let's get back to that point that you were bringing up that, uh, new body, same nightmare. Oh, it was right around there. Yeah. Um, flashing? <laughs> also notice something else in Uzi's bat design. I noticed that earlier, too. Yeah, her wings have hands on them. That's a clearly defined thumb, and you can see the yeah. thumbnail in there. It's literally like a gargoyle design, where they, instead of, like, claws that the wings used to have, it's just a fleshy hand. That's another thing that I'm not really fully understanding. When she makes a wing, is why is it flesh? Why is it, yeah. Why is it flesh and bone and blood as opposed to steel, iron, and oil? Like what V and N are. Is that, like... Are murder drones, like, a way of trying to make their own absolvers? But to have more control over them? Perhaps an absolver was a mistake? I'm, th I'm thinking that's what it is. Like, an absolver was supposed to be some sort of, like, brilliant... Uh, uh, production like product and it turned bad and they use, they created murder drones to like get rid of them and I guess by proxy can't tell what an, absol what an absolver is versus a uh, normal worker drone so just send in murder drones and kill everything so it's not really just a rampant AI situation it's basically whatever is happening to Uzi right now Okay, hang on a minute. Now, I wonder, can I change the, uh... So, okay, they only have Spanish for some reason right now. I was gonna try and... Maybe there's some English words that I can hear, because she said something else at the end there that I didn't quite catch. New body, same horrors. Huh, Sin? I don't See, what was that last bit that she said there? Huh, Sin? Like, huh, Sin, I think. Hmm... Again, if we could get like the if we could get like captions in English, that would be that would be nice to know at least. Was it blood or oil? I'm thinking it's a hybridization of both. No, it's not not Hunsen, like huh, sin, like hmm. Yeah. Or yeah, that's a good point, Dalton. I don't know. It's like it would help if we had like the captions in English. Yeah. Actually, with my limited Spanish, maybe I could see something as far as like what's being said, and I could put into Google Translate. Please. New body. Sin. C y n. Hang on. I'm. I'm just. I'm just gonna put that entire. That entire quote into a. Uh, Google Translate and just see, like, English to Spanish, or Spanish to English. No. It has no translation. That's a name. Oh, yeah, that would be the name. So, yeah, new body, same horrors. No sin. But what does that mean? Like, within the context of everything else what does that actually what does that actually mean what does v know that she's not telling yeah and that's clearly another thing that's happening v is holding all the cards and isn't saying a damn thing to anybody whether that be like a level of like self-preservation or just straight up protection because she's she is very adamant with like not letting n know a single thing 
So let me let's go back to that bit. Also, that is disconcerting as well. <laughs> but this bit. We can't hurt Uzi. Do our jobs, and that thing leaves us alone. I don't know what you're talking about because you won't tell me. <gasps> what are you so afraid of? I'm not afraid. I am. Uzi is. She's a kid like us, V. What is wrong with you? Look after the cameras. Like how we wrote the itinerary at her. Yeah. It's like we're going off the we're going off the books now. But there was another thing that I wanted to bring up uh right here. Was this little bit here and essentially V's response to it more so than anything else that is sheer panic in her face it's like oh god she's figuring it out and the fact that she's able to v or uzi's able to essentially transfer or, or... well the thing is uh the thing is with uh Plant matter, which is, a, I'm going to assume what the arrow is made out of. It's literally just wood. Because it was, it was established that that was what was being shown because it was splitting up as N was shooting it in the same spot multiple times and then it caught fire. So it's clearly made of wood. Oil is literally just biomass that just degrades over time. So, could her absolver powers have been able to just essentially accelerate that arrows time into just degrading into oil. But there's also red in that. That's not. That's another thing as well. And there, I would assume, for the love of God and all that is holy, that there isn't blood in those arrows. Just by <laughs> default, I would hope so. I would hope not. That that be that would be the case. But the fact that absolver powers are just able to just molecularly disassemble and then reassemble something into I mean whatever the hell whatever the hell this thing is just a failed attempt can I say something and you might you might hate me afterwards <laughs> this looks like a failed attempt at a uh what's the word I'm looking for uh Bible accurate angel. A biblically accurate angel. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it looks like a failed attempt at it. I was just going to say it looks Lovecraftian in design. Just with the eyes and the flesh and the tentacles and just the, the croaking as it's like screaming out in pain. Another thing I wanted to look into was literally right at the beginning. And also, I'll, I love the little nod to the camp's name, 98.7, which isn't a radio frequency. Don't try and think there's going to be any sort of hints if you go into, like, your FM radio and go on to that station. That it's literally the uh, average body temperature of the human body. <laughs> oh, shit, you're right. It's usually either 98.6 or 98.7. It fluctuates, but that's, like, the ideal temperature that the body needs to be at. I like that little nod. I don't know if it means anything, but it's just a nice little nod. After the core collapse. And see, after the core collapse. That was something. So, like, if as it was established in the, uh, in the pilot episode, episode one, the planet itself had its core explode. That's why everything's all covered in ice and inhospitable, except for the drones. These are the biggest kickers here. 048. Unit 048. And Uzi herself at least has a collar that says Unit 002. What do the numbers mean specifically as far as like closer to zero or farther to zero? Do you get... Oh god, I'm just figuring this out suddenly. What? When you get minimal value you get closer to null 
is that singularity whoever the worker drone bearing the collar zero 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 was because there's nothing no value boom <laughs> i may just upload this as a separate video all in and of its <laughs> own because this is this we're 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 stirring the pot here we're stirring the pot of oil that's keeping our temperature in check <laughs> That's what I'm... Oh, you are probably on to something right now. <laughs> if, there's ever some, if there's ever something important to any sort of, like, thing that needs to be analyzed, go full Call of Duty Black Ops. What do the numbers mean, Mason? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, when you get closer to zero, do you get closer to null? Which is that singularity that apparently destroyed whatever planet... And in the and the murder drones came from. Viger's a lore theorist now. Game theory, you've got some competition. Maybe they'll recognize me and finally give me credit for that little cameo I made in one of their videos. I don't know. <laughs> Eventually, I'll get recognition for that. But there's and see there's there's Uzi's collar. So like I said, zero zero two. She's very close. So important questions. Who is 001 and who was 000? Because if I've ever, my SCP mind is going a million miles an hour that when you get to SCP 001, that's a big one because <laughs> nobody knows what it is. So when you get closer to nothing, what do you find aside from nothing? That's another thing. Apparently, I'm looking at this. Okay, I was looking at the color. That's still 002 there. I'm guessing is a... Uh, and yeah, they all have tags. They all have tags. This is this is a... Uh, this is Eva right there in the center, looking off in, into the void. That's Doll's mother. I, I, I remember the her picture. Um, I mean, this, I'm looking at this and like, this has got to be, there's got to be something more going on here. Cause what is she looking at? And then we've got, a. I believe that's, that's Uzi's mother standing in the back there. Maybe. Unless that's. I think what, what's right next to her, Uzi's father is Uzi's mother. Like to his and left or his right? Like to the left over here or the down. That's Uzi's mom. Yeah. Let me let she has she looks like she has a collar on and the other one doesn't. Yeah, but this one kinda looks more like Uzi yeah. hair wise. Let, uh, let me let me let me go a little bit forward because I think it might show something more to that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, no. That's Uzi's mom. Because then you can see right there. Yeah. <laughs> this face. <laughs> this face. Just like, what? <laughs> this, though. She was always all, build doors again. Yes. Nori. Right. Unit 002 SA. Happy family memories before Nori went cuckoo and insane. Wonderful. <laughs> I bet you that's just a bunch of like SD cards in there because it's literal memory <laughs> chips. I bet you that's what's going on there. But at the same time now, uh... oh, this is an interesting point. So we have the corpse mountain, I guess, from the first episode. And then you got like the ring planet that's always in that's always in the sky there yeah. and then you've got the vortex null essentially it's the coming sky demons the ceiling. so here's my question uh -huh. she drew that all before they came no no the murder drones are already there 
Because remember, in the first episode that he pointed out, it's like when the nanites took over her mind and I had to kill her. And the nanites only come from the murder drones themselves. Oh. So, N, V, and J were already on the planet when Nori was still alive. Well, that's not what I'm saying, is she could have gone crazy before that's and true. nanites got to her. Crazy first, nanite second, death yeah. third. So yeah, she could have already had these like hallucinations or visions or whatever before all of that happened. Like she, the murder drones may have been prowling around before she went crazy, but all this other stuff was happening at the same time. I'm just starting to see more now though a similarity that there is a toothy mob within the vortex. That's another thing, which gives me more credence to the, the idea that Null and perhaps Unit 000 are one and the same. That whatever this Null singularity black hole thing is, is an absolver that went absolutely to the limit. And J.C. Jensen in response to an Absolver doing what it did, sent the murder drones to destroy basically every Absolver they can find. But since Absolvers and worker drones are more or less exactly the same, kill them all. And ask questions later. Look at this cool <laughs> and then this... <laughs> This just screams middle school to me because it's like you were you were like edgy and emo and all that stuff. If you could draw that S on your backpack, God, this is freaking. That's I can draw. <sighs> Turns out I'm not who either of you needed. Just be safe, okay? So the question is. I'm, go I'm going to go off of the assumption Uzi is not 002. Nori is 002. That much, that much we know for certain because quite literally her tag is 002. So Nori is the original owner of that tag. Not what we were thinking in episode 3. is like, oh, Uzi's 002. No, that's not how that works. Just similar how Eva is 048, not Doll but they have their memento, essentially. But to what extent... So Dahl was killing and consuming other worker drones to just keep her own Absolver powers in check so they wouldn't go haywire like Uzis did. Yeah. What happened, I guess... And the, 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 I, the whole... If I can get a good, like, shot... Yeah, this. Perfect perfect timing. That looks creepy. <laughs> yeah, that that is just like put it on a death metal album and call it a day. <laughs> You're looking at this and and it's like when you look at like V and Uzi side by side, there are similarities and then you have the idea of what the f is happening with Uzi here. Like why is it that when the Absolver powers are going, I guess, haywire, she gets more organic bits growing out of her inorganic body. But when, like, V and N have parts chopped off of their bodies, it all grows back, like, technologically. Like, it's metal and, it's metal and oil, but her bits are growing back as flesh and blood. Maybe oil, but with a flesh, or I guess leathery exterior. There are things happening um, here. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe it's that way because they were working on, like, a cyborg, like, things. Mm -hmm. And they created the Azolvers, and since we already, like, think that zombie drones were made to be this great product and then turned evil mm -hmm. they said murder drones so they probably 
<laughs> God damn it. Um, so they probably factored in, like, these drones are going to get hurt, so we need to have a self-punishing, uh, like, for the murder drones. If that makes sense. Yeah, I could, I could see where you're going with that. I don't think zombie drones were an actual product that was being made. I think what the idea was self-repairing worker drones. And then self-repair meant that Absolute Solver had to pull in certain material to rebuild a worker drone that broke, lost parts, and the only material it could pull in was organic material. So if you lose your metal wings but only have plant matter around, you grow this stuff. <laughs> and perhaps when, an, I guess, 000, zero met complete and utter annihilation, its absolver powers had to repair everything, so it pulled in everything. Like a black hole. Because remember, oh god, it, my my mind is suddenly going a million miles an hour. <laughs> remember when Jay finally met her demise and when her, like, cameras and then later her, like, flesh core finally imploded? It left a little black hole behind. Because it was trying to pull more material in to repair itself but couldn't find anything in time before it just irradiated itself away. Oh, God! <laughs> Glitch Productions, I have your number. I've just figured things out. <laughs> Can I just say, um, this is kind of going off topic a little, but when N was trying to talk to Uzi, I was like, oh, God damn it, that's just like me and Fiker. <laughs> I'm trying to get a good shot of, like, them just, like, fly, yeah, <laughs> falling at terminal velocity and having, like, a quick powwow, <laughs> just being, like, hey, yeah, Dalton, this is going to get an upload. This is going to get a YouTube upload. This material is too good to just keep on the stream. Uh, this will just be a separate video in and of itself, but what were you saying about <laughs> about this scene? It, it, just, it was just so pure. It was like... Oh, I can. I definitely see Viger and N so much. <laughs> I see my bestowy boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect, and I. I still can't get over the fact that uh. I forget. I forget his voice actor's name. Oh my! <laughs> that one. <will>, that one. <laughs> you brought that to my attention. <laughs> And if you watch Lackadaisical or that that like Cat Mafia, I it can't lack a Laxadaisy or Lackadaisical. I I can't remember its name, but he plays another character in there, and he's just completely crazy throwing dynamite everywhere. <laughs> he also voices Angel Dust in Has Been Hotel Pilot. Yeah. I hate the fact that you had to point that out to me. Like, no. And it's so pure. That just shows the range of the voice actor. It, it does. He can he can go on both sides of the absolute just like degeneracy spectrum. <laughs> but and then we get a nice little we get a nice little tidbit here, where it's showing that like sunlight or I guess just like solar energy. I'm going to assume. Is is burning her is burning her skin. I'm just gonna call it skin. I know she doesn't have skin, but it's just burning her skin like a vampire. Yeah. But they're calling them zombies. But it's more eldritch in nature. What is she? She's not a worker drone. She's not a murder drone. It's like I said, I'm calling her an absolver just simply because it's a catchy title that plays into the absolver, the absolute solver stuff that she's running on. And the fact that she is literally like consuming oil like a vampire slash monster to keep everything in check. 
But at the same time, one thing that I wanted to point out as well is once she's calmed down and not panicking anymore, her wings and stuff disappear. she comes back to normal and the temperature drops. So like when she's panicking, the temperature goes up. But when she's not, the temperature goes down. So as instead of like simply her emotions are running high and she's losing control, the temperature goes up and then she turns into a uh, man bat, essentially. <laughs> but once like ends able to calm her down and literally just like look at look at her powers like a little bit more on a playful end, like literally puppeteering her <laughs> puppeteering her little tail here. And then, yeah, we catch up like, oh, right, they were falling. <laughs> but it's this whole design with, like, everything just fleshy and more organic than mechanical. <laughs> yeah, F for everyone we lost this episode. Nah, they don't care. Like, literally, <laughs> nobody cares. <laughs> Life is so frivolous in this. If you're a background character, if you have a name, your death is either going to be super significant or death isn't coming for you. If you don't have a name, uh, you're done for. You're on the chopping block. You're in line to just be massacred by literally anybody and everybody. I mean, freaking <laughs> V just shoots two of them for no reason in front of everybody and nobody cares. <laughs> that's it's just like how many times have i done that to you in <laughs> yeah in murder four <laughs> yep. literally literally this it's just like welcome campers let's sound off one two bam <laughs> <laughs> just like get everyone in line just shoot a guy <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just like <laughs> even he's just <laughs> and just like really did you have to do that <laughs> like they're all like oh god he just got shot it's like really did you have to shoot him <laughs> it's just it's a wonderful dynamic that is just like you never know when someone's gonna bite the dust but it's funny when it happens there's not many shows that can pull that off to the degree that Murder Drones does. Well, I mean, Murder Drones, the actual action that V usually does, is the title of the show. So, if you were expecting anything less than that, I'm sorry, you're a lost cause. But then again, they do it. They shoot another one for apropos of no reason, as well. Just. Oh wait. <laughs> wait. Oh god, it came from this guy. It came from the, it came from the guy that was immediate left. <laughs> I was assuming that it came from V, but she didn't do anything. Watch his arrow. Boom! <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> but the comedy works so freaking well. Because you don't know the tensile strength of those bows or just how strong the average worker drone is supposed to be. <laughs> I first, he doesn't I, even react like no one does. No one does! No one even <laughs> blinks! <laughs> she doesn't even see like a... V doesn't even see like a free meal. Just everyone, he just eats it and that's it. Just boom! <laughs> Nobody blinks! Nobody does anything! It's so freaking like... <laughs> I, I, it happened so fast. I was like, wait, where did that arrow come from? I was like, wait, V's not holding one. And it came like up from his life. And then I look at this guy. I'm like, oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> That's just comedy right there. That's just freaking comedy right there. <laughs> so freaking good. 
Uh, what else needs to be like pointed out here that we need to like? I don't know, but this episode was not what I was expecting. <laughs> well, one thing I needed to look at. Uh, I think I read that's good. That's not what the book said. The most important thing, notes scholar Grizzled McOld Man, is avoiding splitting up your group, as this will pad out the runtime and allow the screenwriter to include more dumb set pieces for each character death that ultimately puts production through hell. <laughs> Indeed, something, something, something in a group to all. It's more proactive for everybody in a group to all die together. Essentially, is what chapter 14 is saying. God, you go back into these episodes and there's always like these nice little like subtle jokes that require you to pause the video and <laughs> really read them out. But speaking of like things that are happening, that was something else I needed to look at. Um, That was another thing that was weird, how she just opens a vortex like that. And it's not really like snapping the wood, it literally warps it. Yeah. So like literally on like a temporal or molecular or spatial level, she rips a hole in the wood. Like it was rubber almost. <coughs> Everything is over. Don't search for answers I'm going to say that this is like a female worker drone cuz this looks like this looks like a dress almost Yeah Oh shoot she's got a picture of like null and she's got more like Duracell batteries she's got the same like absolver logo as well and who is what picture is that? Like, it looks like it might be Jay. It looks like it. I oh, hold on. Oh. I'm realizing I don't have like the cursor enabled, but anyone watch rewatching this more or less play the video alongside and find the scenes as well to analyze with us. I can't really do this with the way that the setup is working, but <clears throat> who was this? Again, probably unimportant, but she's also got the same, like, this is what popped out of Jay scuttling around. Do you remember that unknown robot that the human girl brought in? Yeah. Kind of. The one that's, like, the one that Tessa brings in with, like, yeah. Jay saying, ah, great, another you made another one? And then N sort of has, like, a mental freak out it kind of like it might be her design i hundred percent positive though i feel like that we don't know who that drone is i don't think it's this one because again the helmet says otherwise when that drone had specific hair that went with it the hair was very noticeable Oh, the picture, yes. Yeah. Not the not the drawn herself, not but the, the pitch the, the picture. picture to the left, yeah. It could be. It very much could be. Or could just be some someone else, perhaps. But that's a good that's a good observation there. The other thing I'm noticing now and putting these images side by side with each other, like Below, below the, on the screen, you've got the Absolver logo, or at least, like, whatever icon shows up when Absolver powers are used. And then up in the top right here, just behind the body, you've got the little, like, caricature design of the thing that crawled out of Jay before she definitively met her end in Episode 2 before being copied and rebuilt back in Episode 3. But, like, the same little, like, scuttling thing between like the skull picture up at the top and then the uh, vortex next to it. Why does that thing look just like the Absolver logo? If not one of them, they are one and the same. By the way, someone noticed that Thad had fangs. Who's Thad? 
the uh, cool guy. Oh. Uh, let me. Let me go to the beginning here. This is also a funny joke that you. To ride the bus in, it's literally treating the bus like a horse. <laughs> That guy just always has his head on fire. No kidding. That's that. Like the the cool guy in episode two that tagged along with Uzi. So apparently he had like fangs or something. Well, he's talking to Uzi after the rail gems explode. So Maybe, or maybe that was just like, maybe that's just part of his design. Maybe. And we just like, oh, we're just overlooking, but there was something else I needed to see specifically here. When she walks into this place, this, this is another thing that I'm kind of seeing. There's pictures of the singularity that have a ring around it too. And we always have the gas giant over here. Just like hanging ominously in the sky. I don't want to say one or both of them are one and the same or whatever. But it's just food for thought. And that's another thing I wanted to look into. All employees must... I can't read that at all. All employees must read and... Right, uh, I it, the the ceiling fan, fans blocking everything else. Performance checks and reports are one f are only for workers. Nine four one two six seven three four eight one two zero and two four seven nine. System evaluation due for central or for control. Wander, reminder path maintenance. This week, routes affected include Route 1A, 6C, and 1E. And then literally just, oh, it's all, okay, it's all the dogs. Best boys and girls of the month. I guess those are all, like, glitch production pets. Wanna, wanna bet. Wanna bet on that. Yeah. Which is another thing I wanted to bring up, is, like, there's a calendar that just shows all, like, the dogs. And I'm like, oh, don't worry, they all got out. None of them died. <laughs> <laughs> but there was one more thing that I wanted to look at. In this scene. I do like the utilization of how the Absolver powers work like that. Just like, oh, you could just have, like, the, the, the flashlight behind you just floating there hands-free and everything. But, yeah, here we go. <laughs> it's such a cute couple. And then, yeah. Why are you leaving this dog hanging? National Good Heckin' Doggo d Doggy Day. <laughs> National Wow I Want I Wanna Pet I Wanna Pet This <laughs> National Wow I Wanna Pet This Frickin' Dog Day. <laughs> <laughs> and evacuate all dogs just in case something bad happens. I don't know. Cool, we did that. That's canon. Also, all dogs are immortal now, thanks to science. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So now there's no question. Don't worry. Only humans died when the car collapsed. All the dogs are fine, and also they can't die. <laughs> so freaking <laughs> cool. We did that. That's canon. Just literally, just like throw, just <laughs> talk to this dog in a silly voice. Day. <laughs> national <laughs> yeah, national. <laughs> Doggy day, dog, excellent. <laughs> That's so perfect. That is so freaking per perfect. They know what they're doing and they cover all their bases so you don't have to ask questions. <laughs> but now I have a much more impact. <laughs> I missed that too. She's like, oh, thank God the dogs are okay. <laughs> I missed that bit because I was laughing at all things that were happening here. <laughs> But this, her, is who is that? Is she real or is she a ghost? I think she is a glitch, like how 
Uzi's mom was in mm-hmm. episode two. Well, that was a hologram. That was a hologram. You're probably thinking of how Doll was transporting around and everything. Doll specifically. Yeah. But that could be it. Oh, wait. Do you see that little flicker that happened? Yeah, I did. That's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah, I didn't see that. I didn't see that when I saw her the first time around. Then you look back. And that's not robotic because it's got four fingers and presumably a thumb hidden behind the behind the wall. And the way you hear it like crackle, that's like dry skin moving. And then we look back. I just don't like how the longest chain that you see there is creeping over to that wall. Like, whatever was in there is technically chained and is on the other side of that wall. Oh, I didn't hear what. Because let me look back. Let me look back. Okay, hold up. That chain is still... That chain is still in that direction. Yeah. But what's it attached to? Or who's it attached to? (laughs) And it doesn't move either. To suggest that anything is over there. That's that's the disconcerting part. I think out of everything in this episode, I think the biggest question is who is that? Yeah. I don't this a character being portrayed as such can't just simply be there in the way that she is just simply because ooh it's going to be spooky scary and it's like literally like Blair Witch style standing in the corner sort of deal. I know it's playing homage to that, but you don't just Put that in there and not have it mean something. Just like how the black hole has the word null in it. That has to mean something. So yeah, there are some... There's not just this is the biggest question. This is one of the many questions. This is one of the good questions to to ask in this. What is null? What is the extent of Uzi's transformation? And who is that? And is there anything still chained up in that little house? And can we also just appreciate the idea that when they're going canoeing, it's like they don't fully understand how boats work and they're canoeing on a frozen lake, but still having an absolute blast. It's just like, it's... (laughs) Why? Why do you think that it's like, it's again robots trying to imitate what humans do. It's like, oh, they take boats out on the lake, but don't take into account that the lake is frozen. But the boat's out on the lake, and this is how you do it. You use the paddle to move the boat across the lake, but fail to comprehend, oh, you need water. Well, that's water. It's just frozen, but there's water there. So let's go. What? Does what? Say when he when Uzi like he like mutters something like to himself when Uzi returns to camp to like show and something like the bug in her hand. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let me let me get to that point. Like this scene. Yeah. Okay. Uzi, get on out here! This troop's a team. Wait, no! Includes the reflexes. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> is that all of you? It's just inclusive. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> just a joke. Just a joke. I wonder what happened between Uzi and V to make it so V no longer trusts Uzi. I don't think V ever trusted her to begin with. <laughs> The idea of the being that, like, Uzi is literally what V and the murder drones are technically supposed to be trying to hunt down. Oh, that was something else I needed to look at. 
But it's the idea that Uzi is literally what V is supposed to be hunting and destroying. Not just all worker drones in general, but Absolvers specifically. But because N has that sort of attachment and Uzi hasn't really been doing anything bad per se, V's conflicted on that front. So she wants to destroy Uzi, but it looks bad if she tries. And plus, I guess V does have that sort of like caring nature towards N, and she realize she does know destroying Uzi is going to hurt N by proxy, and she doesn't want to do that. For her own reasons, I don't know, like, to the protective nature of that. But this is something else. So, I guess just like a manifestation of what a murder drone looks like. I was gonna say, this looks like an inkblot test. Yeah, a Rorschach <laughs> test. Just like, what do you see in the ink blots? I see death and destruction. Which is more, which is actually like... <laughs> Calling it an ink blot test is a little bit more on the nose because you know they're using oil, which for them is blood. So it's a it's a blood spatter analysis, <laughs> more so than anything else. <laughs> oh man, I actually took a forensics class in high school and we had to examine like blood spatter patterns to like determine angle of light spray or an analyzing a murder scene. So I. <laughs> Well, it's, it's like post, like, body's not there anymore, but you're looking at the scene of the crime and being like, well, there's where the body was, and then you see the spray going up against the wall. Or, like, there's just a splotch on the wall. It's like, oh, that's where they were shot. As the bullet came out and the blood came with it, and then just... Pfft. So, but back to this. So then you got, essentially... The, like, singular eyeball-looking thing that came out of Jay in Episode 2. Mm -hmm. Just, like, this twisted amalgamation. Actually. That kind of looks like what Uzi made. Yeah, it's more, it is more, like, fleshy than anything else. But what I'm also seeing is that sprouting out of, like, the main body, almost like a tail and spine, you can see, like, what appears to be a head with hair on it growing out in the top right hand corner okay yeah and then like sprouting out is like those like scythe hands that jay's body had like those pincers sort of thing sprouting out like where a right arm would be on the left side of the page the big old like hook thing this is what i was really wanting to look at Program admission notice. Disassembled drone marked above must. Wait. Lights below. That's. Mark. I'm almost seeing up top here. Marked for disassembly, improper disposal of AI, punishable by fines and imprisonment. I don't like how the light is refracting too much off of the paper. I can't read anything yeah. on it. They probably did that so. Deliberately. Yeah. To either hide, like, non-essential material, there's no need for a joke in the writing, it's not really important or deliberately like hiding information in plain sight but this phrase lights below what did they mean by that when they scrolled that in there hmm i'm more or less talking out loud so that maybe somebody in the chat or in the comments of the video can yeah. can sort of be like, hmm, that's something to latch on to. Let me think about that, too. Uh, and then the joke is this side is intentionally left blank. But what's also important is this claw that's embedded in the paper as well. That claw tooth something some metal, bit. some metal bit but one thing that i have no one thing i did notice with it though is the way that it's sort of contoured mm -hmm. 
I don't think that's a murder drone claw or blade because those are like fine steel gray knife hands. This is, it's got like that blackish knuckle sort of bit at the end, but then it's white like bone. Sort of like what Jay's like grabber hands in episode two looked like when she was mutating. Yeah. So I feel like that's more Absolver than Murder Drone than anything. And then this guy, the gold bug. What was he saying specifically? Angry at first. Scanned Uzi. Welcome back, 002. How can I help you today? So, but that was one thing I want to point out. Scanned her head, not the necklace. If it were scanning the necklace, it would have shown us, shown scanning the necklace, but it made a deliberate choice of scanning the head. And then calls her 002. Submit time card, PTO request, re registered torture chamber complaint, to end my suffering, promo offer discontinued, and don't need to worry about that. <laughs> uh. But the more important bit is literally it calling her 002. I think that 002 is Sin or Nori. It's Nori we've confirmed. Like, we don't know who or what Sin is specifically, unless that's V sort of deliberately, hey, N's not here, it's just me and Uzi, I can call her what she actually is. Because then again, then again, Sin is three letters, Uzi is three letters. Is Ozzy just a new name, or is Sin her real name? Well, C-Y-N. Why? Then how would Uzi get onto that planet? Because it seems like this is a memory that V is having from the original home planet. <sighs> hmm. This is a long shot. A very, very, very long shot. And again, one of those that I would like to be proven wrong. But what if the robot behind Tessa is Sin? Maybe. Somehow, some way in the past, used Absolver powers to a degree, was destroyed, and then rebuilt. Or had her memories transferred to a new body, but only selective memories. Or no memories whatsoever. But there's some identifier marks into like a baby worker drone body. That then was reassembled into what Uzi is now. I think it's safe to say that Sin and Uzi are one and the same, but to what degree is Sin supposed to be... Sin is short for Cynthia. Any links there? We haven't heard anything about a name, about a Cynthia. We never heard anything about a Sin either until now. Until just now. And it's literally just V saying it under her breath once. And nobody saying anything else about it. Also, Uzi didn't born with the Absolver. I'm so sorry. She acquires it for something that Jay threw, if I'm not mistaken. No, by the looks of things, she's always had this. It's just now waking up. Like, there, the only thing that has technically happened with Uzi that could be t considered questionable was that in the first episode, she gets stabbed in the hand by N. But that was just a nanite thing that got cured because it. <laughs> what did she do right after? in his mouth yes and then that doesn't get brought up anymore there's no real yeah. bit that's taken into account on that front so from all i can tell what i can tell is the absolver powers have always been there they're just starting to wake up 
To what degree does it mean that they're waking up? I'm not entirely certain. And why now? If Uzi's if Uzi's mom is still alive, I'll be surprised. She's not alive. It's been it's been confirmed. Uh, freaking her, Mr. Her, Mr. Dorman had to freaking off her. He even hold the held the wrench that <laughs> freaking killed her, <laughs> and then gave it to Uzi as like a memento, which was like, oh, cool, thanks. So that again, not to that degree. But again, then how does uh, Nari play into all of this as well? As the true 002, what is her place in all of this? But it, continuing on, I wanted to see what else this, what else Goldbug was saying here. Call elevator. Does that mean anything lights below? Call the elevator to find the lights below. I'm not editing any of this. I'm gonna. I'm going to include these long pauses for thought, <laughs> just to show the authenticity of it and everything. And then it's waiting for her. Elevator. Elevator. Please place me on proximity reader. Cabin fever labs. What are the cabin fever labs? Perhaps. Where is that? What are you? And then yeah, I misheard him. <laughs> Wear his hat. What are you? Voice, <laughs> voice recognition software at its finest. Even in, even past year three thousand, they still haven't ironed out those kinks yet. <laughs> Invalid response. Yes. <laughs> Again, just place that joke. Were we going to get any answers? No, because the voice recognition software was not correct. I want to get back to to N here. Target missing. If he was looking for Uzi, well, go? if she, yeah, if he was looking for Uzi, he would have found at least three foot three sets of footprints going in that direction yeah. not one because the two that uzi then kills went in ahead of her so that was what i was initially believing that this is a completely different location altogether which then begs the question who's he following whose footprints are those because they're not uzi's because there would, he would find more of them because of the other two that went ahead. Yeah. So who was ahead of him here? Plus, in the same vein, uh, she had different lock, by the way. So different door, which means different location altogether. Plus the fact that she had closed all the windows, shut off all the lights. So... Yeah. It was clearly established that the room, that the building she went into was a single room. Whereas where ends walking into has a bunch of computers and lights and everything else. So yeah, this is a different location altogether. Though again, who he was following, I don't know. Unless it's the ghost in the other building. That led him here. God, my head hurts now. I hope anyone from Glitches would watch this video and just be like, look at him scrambling around for answers. I just want to see if there's anything else that... It, well, that's, that's another thing I wanted to see. What kind of... That bug in the left bottom left-hand corner. That's not one of those roaches. No, that looks organic. That looked like a hand. Watch it crawl ab cr watch it crawl away. It's like a hand like a hand that's being pulled back. I don't like that. No. 
show Jinx that. Is it a spider? Is it a hand? Is it a spider hand? I'm not gonna show Jinx that and have her freak out. And again, it, the scuttling sound is different than the, the roaches. So that's that's something different as well. My money is it's that ghost that Uzi saw ahead of time before it cuts to the lake scene. The chain lady, I'm calling her. <laughs> Do we see anything? Yeah, we don't see anything there. And again, the eyes Bye. blinking. That does, that does scream ghost of some sort. But that's not... One thing I want to point out, it is a clear juxtaposition that this isn't like, that isn't a worker drone to a normal degree. Because you're looking at, you're looking at all the other drones eyes, which are highly like oval and elliptical shaped. Those are perfect circles yeah. that just blink. Like shortly after he blinks too. I'm just now noticing to highly emphasize that that's someone else looking at him. I'm really glad I caught that. Yeah, I'm thankful that you caught that. I would have not seen that at all. But then what is the significance of... I guess just simply calling Absolvers zombie drones to give them that sort of antagonistic sort of... title. To sort of say, they're the enemy, destroy them. As opposed to saying, well, what is an absolver? And everything. Am I the only one who hasn't seen Eden's headband throughout this throughout the chapter? I think it's just simply because the hat's blocking them. Yeah. The hat plus hair is just blocking the view. So yeah, his it's like probably right underneath the brim there of Vortex. His pilot cap on. So I'm thinking it might be just a part of his pilot hat. Wait, did he have it when he was dapper in? Yes, he did. He okay. did. I think the only addition to the hat was the, like, pilot logo that Uzi finds in episode two. And then places that on his head. Like, you are the pilot of this, of this craft. <laughs> so. But then again, probably our biggest question is that who or what is slash was null this is clearly the this is clearly the mansion from episode two's flashback this is clearly where n was from what happened here but then again Uh, again, this is the these little flashbacks that N has are very important to take into account. So she's already that's clearly Absolver. I'm seeing it in the eye. Yeah. She's got the Absolver eye. Her hair is all sorts of twisted and everything. And I'm also just noticing she has the pigtails from that cartoon drawing that you were that we were looking at previously. Yeah. So this. And I, I want to say that she's probably still in the maid outfit. So this may be our uh, our drone that Tessa had. That Anne was having a bit of a freak out when remembering. Nope, hold on, going back. Because of the hand in the chandelier. What I'm most concerned with is that that hand looks suspiciously small. If it were an adult hand, which we've seen basically attached to Jay's Eldridge freaking body, they had longer, like more pronounced fingers. Even just by looking at the thumb, that's quite short and stubby and childlike. Which does add a level of morbidity that morbidity that none of us are prepared for in this show. I want to say the dogs made it out, but the kids not so much. 
which is bad. <laughs> yeah, maybe the girl in the flashbacks of episode of chapter two is Sin. It's entirely possible that perhaps that's Sin. Now that's an interesting point that I just I'm just now seeing. Um, why is she blacked out in that little frame there? But we can clearly see on the right side that N, I'm going to assume that's N on the right side, isn't blacked out. And the only things that are ever truly blacked out in either memory or literally like happening in real time are people. Oh no, my mind is going to places that make me overthink. I only have you to blame for Mina because I have somebody to bounce these ideas off of. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I am I am cracking this episode open more the so than I have any other episode. <laughs> All the other episodes are super straightforward. This is a uh, hiding literally everything in plain sight, but moving so fast you can't see it yeah. sort of thing. Because then again, it juxtaposes to the hand that's completely blacked out. But you know who else is also blacked out? Null. Yeah. Did they try some like human drone hybrid and then the Absolver went cuckoo bananas? And that's why they want them gone. And that's why Uzi's growing organic bits. Because she's part organic. Because <laughs> she's part human. Which again, in retrospective, when you're looking back into episode two and her saying, oh, I'm sweaty. Why am I sweating? Because <laughs> she's part human. <laughs> Oh no, my mind! <laughs> I'm having a breakdown here. Uh, Coop, to say that that's a Maggie reference is to say that Anne is a, is an Angel Dust reference, just simply on the grounds that they have the same voice actors and actresses. <laughs> oh no. This is our biggest question here is what we're staring at right now. And the idea that we've got like the whole we've got the whole circle with the with the flaring event horizon and everything around it that like spinning vortex. But then we also have the digital circle in the blackness. Yeah. That's circled around null. So who or what is slash was null whom I'm tempted tentatively calling uh zero 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 triple zero if the drone controls their eyes why Uzi blushes that's a big question it's again the idea that it's it's kind of played for laughs that the drones are trying to mimic humanity to a degree and that's kind of like the whole gist of like oh they're gaining sentience and everything i think it hits more so to uzi that she's displaying more like emotions than everything else she's the one that's straight up panicking she's the one that's sweating quite literally she's the one that's kind of developing feelings what in whatever direction those are gonna go like just feelings in general whether they be feelings towards n or quite literally anybody else um anything else we should bring up that we need to like look into before died a little bit ago i was just like <laughs> nodding and agreeing <laughs> you're like wow he's speaking facts through the insanity <laughs> put my box in put my memories in a box and store it for later because i'm about to go off the rails and go cuckoo bananas myself cuckoo insane um 
Yeah, honestly, I think that's where we can leave it for now before I literally just lose my mind. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be an episode in and of itself that needs to be freaking overanalyzed again. I'll probably watch it again and be like, oh, I came up with some more crazy, some more crazy freaking theories. Uh, yeah, thank you for joining me on this, mine, and just being like, being, <laughs> being literally just a wall to bounce my ideas back at me and suggest <laughs> even crazier things. Spotting the eyes. Thank you for spotting the freaking eyes. Because I at first thought, oh, those are just computer lights. And you're like, yeah, those look like computer lights. And then they blinked. <laughs> and then they blinked. So I'm like, wait, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> uh, me, yes, guess. much a freaking appreciated. I'll cut the video right freaking there because I don't think we need to go into any more, uh, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> more like stuff and everything. We're about to hit the we're five minutes out from the two hour mark. I think that's where we're gonna end the stream because my mind is my mind is like short circuiting right now. <laughs> uh, I know I know I'm not going to be able to. Uh, well, Dalton, why? Oh, that's not Dalton. That's radiation. <laughs> Radiation coming in as per usual, gifting a sub to Dalton for tier one. <clears throat> now Dalton doesn't have to only be late and have to sit through ads. You can take one of those away. <laughs> so sh thank you, Radiation, for the gifted sub to Dalton. In typical fashion, right at the end of the stream. <laughs> Why does that keep happening? <laughs> Uh, anyway, thank you guys for stopping by for the live watch party and then just sitting back and watching me go completely crazy with theories and everything. Again, thank you, Mina, for joining me on this excursion. Thanks for inviting me. This is fun. I can't wait for episode five to be more of the same. <laughs> if you thought this was crazy, I can only anticipate what episode five is going to be like whenever that may show up. So either way. Thanks for stopping by, guys. I'll see you guys when I see you guys. And as always, doodles. <laughs>